Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll explain you differentiator using operational amplifier. This session is quite interesting. Here you will be learning so many interesting fundamentals based on operational amplifier as well as differentiator circuit. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first I'll be discussing about basics of differentiator. After that, I'll explain you operational amplifier as a differentiator. Here I'll derive output equation based on differentiation of input. After that, I'll explain you interesting input output waveforms of differentiator. After that, I'll explain you frequency response of simple differentiator. After that, I'll explain you limitations of this simple differentiation and based on those limitations, I'll be designing practical differentiator. So based on practical differentiator, I'll explain you frequency response of practical differentiator. Right. So these are the outlines of this video. Now I'm going to start with explanation with first agenda that is basics of differentiator. See differentiator is what? Differentiator is differentiating input signal with respect to time. So if your input is V in over here, then output will be differentiation of input with respect to time. This differentiator that we use it to identify high frequency components from input signal. So here, whatever high frequency components that is there with input signal that one can identify with the use of differentiator. Like if you observe here, see this is input where at this portion input is constant as if input is constant it does not have high frequency components but here if you observe input is varying fast so as input is varying fast over here these are the lines which is having high frequency components so if you observe output of this signal then in this you see when falling edge is there at that time output is having negative spikes and when the rising edge is there at that time output is having rising spike. So one can say differentiator circuit that is used to identify high frequency components. See differentiator is essentially high pass filter. High pass filter means it allows high frequency to pass through it. Means at the output side you will be having high frequency components only low frequency components at input are blocked by this differentiator circuit. So these are the basics. Now I'm going to explain you operational amplifier as a differentiator. So here if you observe we have open. Now first of all you need to understand few basics regarding open. See we have negative feedback over here. So as we have negative feedback here you will have to apply virtual short concept or you can say virtual ground concept. What is it? See in negative feedback, potential at non-inverting and inverting terminal will be same. So this positive terminal that is having ground means here we have zero voltage. So same voltage that will be there at this terminal. So that is inverting terminal. So virtual ground concept explains what? Potential at both of this input will be equal due to negative feedback. Right. One more thing that one should know over here. See this op-amp that is having very high input impedance. So this op-amp is having input impedance that is very high. Because of high input impedance, current going inside this op-amp, if I say it is IB, then that has to be zero. Now let us try to understand what will happen with this circuit. See here we have V in input. And because of V in input, let us say through this capacitor, through this capacitor, current is IC. And this IC that is bisected over here and here. Let us say in this resistor, current is IF. So here, if you observe this node, so at this node, if you apply KCL, then incoming current that is equals to outgoing current. Here incoming current is IC and outgoing current that is IF and IB, right? 
so here ib that is negligible as i have told you that is happening because of high input impedance of this op amp so you can say ic that is equals to if now what is ic see current passing through capacitor that is capacitance c into rate of change of voltage over here with respect to time so here voltage is how much v in so ic is how much ic is capacitance c into dv in by dt now what is if over here see if that is happening across this rf so if direction that is there in this direction here if you observe voltage is zero so potential difference across rf because of if that is zero minus v out so zero minus v out divided by this resistance that is if resistance is rf so you can say v out that is you see that is negative over here this rf will go on other side so c into rf into dv in by dt so output voltage that is proportional to rate of change of input voltage with respect to time so output voltage that is a differentiation of input voltage that's why this circuit is differentiator that one can say right now here let me show you waveforms of input and output with differentiator so as i have told you differentiator that is identifying high frequency components so here you see with square wave input output will be having spikes and those spikes will be happening when there is a rising edge and falling edge at falling edge there is negative spike and at rising edge there is positive spike why that is happening the reason is differentiator is acting like a high pass filter here if you observe see input is triangular wave so here see we have this line of input which is having positive slope so if you differentiate positive slope you will be having positive constant if you differentiate negative slope you will be having negative constant so this triangular wave that is getting converted into square wave after differentiation if you observe here see input is constant so if you differentiate constant with respect to time you will be having zero voltage here if you observe input is sine see this v in that is vm sine omega t so if you differentiate this with respect to time you will be having vm into omega cos omega t so here output will be vm into omega cos omega t so here cos omega t waveform that is drawn see sine that is initiating from zero cos that happens from vm onwards right so that is our differentiation that is happening with different input signals now let us have frequency response of simple differentiator so with simple differentiator i have explained you how output is differentiation of input but if you wanted to have frequency response then in frequency response we need to plot gain with respect to frequency so what is gain see gain is gain is output divided by input right gain is output divided by input so here we have negative feedback with inverting configuration so what is the gain of this circuit that is minus of rf that is minus of rf divided by xc where xc is impedance of capacitance what is xc xc is 1 by 2 pi fc right so let us substitute it so this will go on numerator right that is the gain of this differentiator circuit now if you carefully observe magnitude of gain so what is magnitude of gain magnitude of gain that is rf into 2 pi fc see here rf is constant 
2 pi is constant and capacitance C is constant. So you can say gain is here you can say this gain that is directly proportional to frequency F. Right. So gain is directly proportional to input frequency F. So if you want to plot gain in terms of dB, then here what will happen? As frequency increases, gain will increase linearly. Let me show you how. See if you increase frequency, then gain will increase linearly. You can observe over here. Right. So here gain is increasing linearly with respect to increase in frequency. So that is how it will happen like this. But if you observe frequency response of differential amplifier, then that is happening by this gray color over here. So your gain cannot go beyond this. So practically, if you want to plot gain of this simple differentiator, then it will be happening like this. You see, it will be happening like this. And then from here onwards, it will start to fall. It will follow this trajectory, right? So here we have seen the response. Now question is what is this frequency FA? See this frequency FA that is happening when gain is 0 dB. Gain is 0 dB means what? Gain is 0 dB means in terms of magnitude gain is equals to 1. So here if gain that is equals to 1 then here 2 pi Fc into Rf that is equals to 1. So based on that you can have frequency that is F. You see when gain is equals to 1 this frequency is Fa. As I have told you when gain that is equals to 0 dB at that time frequency is Fa. So here as if gain is equals to 1 F is equals to Fa. So here you need to substitute F is equals to Fa. So we will be having Fa that is 1 divided by 2 pi c into rf right so that is how it is happening now you need to understand few limitations of this simple differentiator let me explain you what are those limitations see here first limitation explains you as gain increases with increase in frequency the given differentiator is sensitive concerning high frequency noise what it means with high frequency gain is more so here high frequency noise is getting amplified more over here. You see, here if you observe this response, so high frequency response is having higher gain. So here noise of high frequency is amplified more over here. So that is resulting into stability issues, right? So here as gain increases with increase in frequency, given differentiator is sensitive to high frequency noise. Now second limitation that is the regarding input impedance. See input impedance that is Xc over here. You see input impedance that is impedance of this capacitance. So Xc is what? Xc is 1 by 2 pi Fc. Right. So with higher frequency, with higher frequency, this input impedance that is decreasing over here. So as you increase frequency, input impedance is decreasing over here and one should know with any circuit input impedance should be as high as possible but here with higher frequency input impedance is decreasing what it means here stability of given circuit that is decreasing right so these are the limitations which is there with simple differentiator now how to overcome those limitations so for that let me show you practical differentiator see in this practical differentiator here what we are doing is we are additionally connecting this resistance R and this capacitance CF. You see here this is the basic circuit in which here I am additionally adding resistance R and feedback resistance CF. Now because of which what will happen? So as if you add additional resistance R and CF then here you will be overcoming from this limitations. Let me explain you how. If you observe this circuit, then here now input impedance is how much? Now input impedance that is a series combination of R and this Xc, right? So now your input impedance, now your input impedance Z in, now that is changing, now that is become 
R plus Xc. If you want magnitude, then magnitude of input impedance. Now that will be square root of R square plus Xc square. Right. The reason is capacitance is having imaginary components. Right. So input impedance now that is this. Now if you increase frequency, what will happen? If you increase frequency, Xc will decrease. If you increase frequency, what is Xc? 1 by 2 pi Fc. So if you increase frequency, Xc will decrease, but input impedance cannot go lower than R. The reason is R is there in series with Xc. So here, even if we increase input frequency, this input impedance Z in cannot go lower than R. So here we are providing higher input impedance compared to simple differentiator. With this input impedance can go towards zero, right? But here input impedance cannot go below R, right? And we wanted to have higher input impedance, right? Now one more thing that you need to understand over here. See here second limitation that was there regarding as if you increase frequency then you will be increasing gain that was resulting into sensitivity with high frequency noise. So here, here if you talk about gain then now your new gain over here that will be impedance of this feedback divided by impedance of this input. Now impedance of this feedback that is RF parallel XF and impedance of this input Z in that is R in series with R in series with XC. So here see now your gain that cannot go beyond some limit means your gain cannot exceed to some limit. So here we are providing better stability in terms of gain concerning high frequency. Let me explain you how. If you observe here, see this, this circuit of input that is Z in and with this Z in, with this Z in, we have one cutoff frequency. With this Z in, we have one cutoff frequency. Let us say that is F1. With this ZF, with this ZF, we have second cutoff frequency. Let us say that is F2. So what is F1? Here F1 is 1 by 2 pi RC and what is F2 that is 1 divided by 2 pi RF CF right. So these two are frequency those are cutoff frequencies. Now because of this cutoff frequencies what will happen you see previously previously if you have seen frequency response so that was going towards maximum value. After that, that was approaching to differential of M's gain, right? But here we have two cutoff frequencies. And because of these two cutoff frequencies, that gain cannot go up to maximum value. You see how. Here, it will be increasing linearly initially. And then it will go up to FA. After that, what will happen is it will be having one cutoff frequency that is F1. And after F2, again, it will be going to fall over here. If I talk about border plot, then with respect to border plot, this plot is having slope that is 20 dB per decade. After that, one cutoff frequency will be there. So that slope that will be decreased by 20 dB per decade. So here slope will be 0 dB per decade. And after that, we have another cutoff frequency. So your slope now that will be having minus 20 dB per decade. Right. So now you see your gain that cannot go to maximum value. So high frequency noise that will decrease over here. Right. Now question is in which region we should be using this practical differentiator. So see answer is one should be using practical differentiator over here. One should be using practical differentiator over here in between FA and F1. What is FA? FA that I have already explained you that is 1 by 2 pi RFC right. So FA that one can calculate 
this fa that one can calculate based on 1 by 2 pi c into rf and this f1 this f1 that is this f1 that is lower of this two f1 that is lower of this two so f1 could be 1 by 2 pi rc or it could be 1 by 2 pi rf cf lower of this two right and if you want accurate differentiation then see here you should not go up to f1 you should go up to f1 divided by 10 let me write that even so frequency should be from fa to f1 divided by 10 where f1 should be lower of 1 by 2 pi rc or 1 by 2 pi rf cf see that is how one should be using this practical differentiator i hope you have understood all those things still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video